Hey guys, in this video we're going to relate the Reynolds Transport Theorem to the conservation of linear momentum. So another major property we can relate fluid dynamics to in the Reynolds Transport Theorem is linear momentum. If we go back to our original Reynolds Transport Theorem equation that we looked at in the previous topic, uh, if you haven't seen that, please go back and uh, look at the uh, Reynolds Transport Theorem equation, it is key to these two topics. Um, so we're, now we're going to be uh, looking at n equal to mv. So that's uh, uh, property any property n equal to the linear momentum. Um, so on the left hand side we'll have uh, dmv on dt. So I'm going to just sub in for each terms to derive our linear momentum equation. Um, since mass is always conserved in a system and the derivative of velocity is acceleration in this term, I can take m out of the derivative. dv on dt is acceleration. Total derivative of velocity is acceleration. So we get m a. And if we remember Newton's second law, which should be pretty well ingrained, in your mind, uh, F equals MA, of course. So uh, DMV on DT is the sum of forces in the system that we're looking at. Uh, now going to our eta, remember our eta was N on M. So that property N in this case is MV divided by M, and we get V for our eta. If we sub all that back into our Reynolds Transport Theorem equation, we get this here. Remember that all equals the sum of forces in the previous topic, uh, conservation of mass equation equaled zero. Uh, it equals something in this equa in this uh, uh, conservation of linear momentum equation. So it makes it quite uh, difficult in comparison. Um, but our other terms are quite similar, except that we've got an additional v here. Uh, so for steady flows. This, of course, cancels out because uh, delta rho on delta t uh, reduces down to zero. You'll mostly be dealing with steady flows, so your equation will look like this, um, which makes it a little bit simpler, um, but it is still quite a difficult topic, um, but lots of integration, so we'll, we'll see a few examples in the next few videos. But the steps we take are quite similar to the mass conservation problems we've already dealt with. Uh, so you first select a control volume with as many free surfaces and boundaries as possible. Uh, but instead of integrating straight away, we first have to split our sum of forces. 